So the part three of today, today uh, symposium is to discuss <coughs> exciting development of, uh, as the title says, development of, and I would say, super long acting interferon as a new therapy for polycythemia vera and ET. But for now, we have only information uh, in polycythemia vera. <coughs> and this is the medication that uh, has been developed under the leadership of Dr. Heinz Gislinger, who was uh, very kind to share his slides with me. This was also published last month in uh, Blood, for anybody to read the paper, excellent summary. <coughs> and uh, this gives us opportunity to advance the field and answer many questions that you brought up in prior talks uh, on how to select the patients and uh, to uh, explore uh, a super long acting interference. So let's see what happens here with this uh, medication. If we compare long acting interference at the chemistry level, at the basic level, not to go in real chemistry, but just to say that the pegylated part to interferon is what makes the difference, and it comes to uh, different sizes and different outcomes of what that means for the actual product. As you see, peg intron, as was mentioned before, and, and Pegasus are the ones that uh, are commercially available for different indication, known for myeloproliferative neoplasms. And they are given weekly to the patients, and we have those studies done already in ET and PV that were reviewed. With the pegylated part, you have 14 or 8 positional isomers of the drug when it's given to a person. And with the new interferon, we call it AOP 2014 or ROPEG interferon alpha 2B which uh, has a, a, a pegylated size of 40 Ks, you get pegylated single site specific conjugation to interferon, and therefore you get a predominantly single positional form of interferon. So uniformly chemi chemically different than the other ones. That has direct effect on uh, its uh, uh, um, bioequivalence and uh, the level in the blood, like this. This is the pharmacodynamic comparison between the Pegasus and the AOP 2014 in terms of the measurement, uh, pharmacodynamic measurement, and you can see that uh, the medication stays uh, 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 longer available. And therefore, in the study that I will describe, it was given every two weeks. And most recent update uh, at the, the European Hematology Association meeting was actually that uh, later on it might be even given once a month. So that means a lot for uh, tolerance and for efficacy. If you can tolerate, you can deliver better, and overall outcome might be improved. <clears throat> so PEG in Vera study was published, and this is the outline. It was a phase one, two study based in Europe as you see in Austria in particular, and it, at the beginning was done as we do all the other investigational studies, three plus three study design, with the safety as a paramount to efficacy. First safety, then efficacy, and efficacy was then evaluated in the phase two part, which was exploratory extension part for overall inclusion of about 50 patients. These are patient characteristics. The typical patients with polycythemia vera were some of them have splenomegaly, this is line number three. The spleen is present in those patients to some extent, but not extraordinarily elevated or enlarged. Phlebotomy requirement is in place for majority of the patients, and uh, the uh, patients were treated previously with hydroxyurea in about a third of the cases. You see that platelets were ever, uh, elevated in number of patients as were a white cell count and uh, as expected, the JAK2 positivity was present in everybody with allelic burden at around 50%. So this is how it was done. In the left part is a phase one part where the dose levels are indicated, starting from low to high. And again, tolerability driven, as it was done in the past with other interferons. Dr. Talpas, who is with us, knows very well. He developed uh, prior forms of interferon uh, for these uh, indications. Um, and conducted this study, so th that was done first. And then once the dose was found, the phase two was uh, initiated with additional 25 patients, uh, so total 51 altogether. This is the result in the control of hematocrit over time. 
As you see, majority of the patients achieved hematocrit control right away, basically, from the beginning. And at uh, month 12, 76% uh, of the patients had hematocrit below 45% and were phlebotomy free. So assessment was done after one year. It does take some time and those adjustments are necessary for an individual to come to the best uh, dose and best efficacy relative to the toxicity. We'll uh, analyze that. But 76, so three quarters of the patients basically normalized hematocrit without phlebotomy need at 24 months, at uh, 12 months. In terms of uh, white blood cell control, we see similar uh, achievement where a majority of the patients uh, had a white blood cell count less than 10,000, which is arbitrarily set as a response by experts in the field, as Ruben was discussing uh, earlier on. This uh, is considered by the experts to be a response, and we have analyzed it. The question is, is this the right number? But you see, by and large, that the patient's number do get better. The same with the platelets. The majority of the patients achieve normalization of the platelets right from the beginning, so the activity is seen fast. It doesn't take too many months for this to be seen. And at 12 months, 84% of the patients said platelets below 400, which was judged to be a response. Remember, in the past, it used to be 600,000. Now it's 400,000 want to have patients within the normal limits uh, by modern thinking. So overall, hematological response, if you look at the, what is in red, complete responders, normalization of all the, uh, the numbers, partial responders and non-responders, it gets better over time. And uh, the number eventually uh, goes above 50% in complete hematological response uh, on therapy with uh, super long-acting interferon. Now, this is analysis by the uh, the dose that uh, was given to the patients, mean dose, again, the dose was adjusted according to needs for efficacy and tolerability. What this gives us is analysis with, uh, on the left side, low mean dose, less than 300 micrograms every two weeks, and on the right side, in 16 patients, high mean dose, more or equal to 300 micrograms every two weeks, which tells us that the, there is no really dose response as it was expected from prior experiments and uh, studies with the long-acting interferon Pegasus. Lower might be more tolerable and more effective, so one needs to be uh, thinking about that, not to push the dose unnecessarily. Spleen was uh, elevated in some of the patients. About 30% had elevation in the spleen based on ultrasound above normal, and there is a trend in the improvement of the spleen. Uh, but again, only a minority of the patients had an issue with the spleen in this particular study. It, did, it is getting better over time. And then what we talked about before and what's highlighted uh, by Dr. Hexner is a disease modification, which is the characteristics of interferon over chemotherapy agents like hydroxyurea or anagrelide. Here we have similar type of analysis over time in looking at the jack to little burden in the whole population of uh, treated patients. As you can see, trend for uh, normalization, even in some patients, complete uh, elimination of the JAK2 positive uh, cells in the sample. And if you look at the individual patient level, this is where we are at the moment. Uh, you see that the majority of the patients would decrease the allele burden, but to different extent. And what is necessary is to, be, to test these samples beyond they are just looking at the jack little burden like it was highlighted for a prior experience with the Pegasus, that presence or absence of other mutations may have influence on the overall um, disease modification benefit of the therapy. But as you can see, there are uh, uh, patients that actually become complete uh, molecular responders. So if you compare then the clinical response to uh, a molecular response, the clinical response is A, the molecular response is B. There is uh, obviously much more uh, on the clinical ground in terms of the complete hematological response, partial hematological response, and only a tiny fraction of patients have no clinical response when uh, the molecular response is following up on that clinical benefit. It probably takes longer, really, to get to the, the high levels of, uh, of a complete uh, molecular response uh, as it is uh, evident in the clinical hem hematological complete response. 
but the promise is that the drug over time will improve that uh, elimination of the JAK2 uh, in, ma in many more patients. What about the side effects? It is interferon after all, but it is long-acting interferon, and it is given every two weeks, and now we know in an extension study actually that people go from every two weeks to every four weeks. The type of the side effects are similar to what uh, is seen with other preparation of interferon, but at the lower levels, and only about 20% of the patients throughout the whole study has discontinued to the therapy due to adverse events, which is comparable to other long-acting interferons and better than what the regular interferon would usually uh, uh, require. So in summary, this uh, interferon, uh, AOP 2014, can be given every two weeks with a low toxicity, and uh, it can actually result in high clinical responses as well as uh, very significant molecular responses, judged by the measuring of the jack 2 allele burden. And in an extension study, again, we can see uh, patients uh, going from every two weeks to every four weeks uh, for a longer-term uh, uh, benefit and the duration of the time. This study uh, was done in Europe, uh, and the follow-up study called PROUD PV study is uh, largely based in Europe as well. This is the study that is hopefully going to uh, result in approval of uh, AOP 2014. This is for patients with polycythemia vera, either naive, this is on the left side of the slide, or previously treated with hydroxyurea, as described on the slide, where patients are stratified on, uh, based on certain characteristics and are randomized between the uh, long-acting interferon and hydroxyurea uh, for uh, assessment after 24 uh, a month of, uh, of therapy, uh, 12 months of therapy. So we are eagerly awaiting the results of this study. Some preliminary results were already presented, uh, uh, suggesting that this uh, drug is uh, really <coughs> advancing the field. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention.